So frankly, uh, I, I was going to call a ceasefire on seven round Vikings mock drafts, but then I realized whenever I, when am I going to have this opportunity again? I mean, next week, what, what are we going to do? Fire up the mock draft machine for 2025? We might just for schnitz and giggles, but one more day, one more day. That's what we're going to do. So seven round, seven round Vikings mock draft. Should we trade up? Should we stick and pick? I don't know. I don't know. Let, all right, let, let's stick and pick because I, I don't feel like pausing. All right. So, uh, Williams, Daniels, May, one, two, three. Uh, McCarthy goes to the Giants. Uh, so the Vikings decide to not trade up in this situation. They decide to keep their powder dry, hanging on to 11, 23, which could be, uh, I kind of like it. We're good to go here. Now, the Vikings have a decision. So they could roll the dice uh, on Michael Penix Jr. or Bo Nix getting in 23. But also, you do have the Broncos and the Raiders champing at the bit at 12 and 13. Now, if this had been a real situation, I, I think that the Vikings would have made a small trade up either to 8, 9, or 10 uh, to fully box out the Broncos. Now you could be like, well, why trade up to 10? Well, so that the Broncos or the Raiders don't trade up to 10. That's what it is, man. So the Vikings uh, in, in this spot, uh, actually, Roma Dunze is just there too. <laughs> what do we do? Oh, my goodness. So, mm, all right, so let, let's recap again. I, I didn't even notice that. So let's recap. And Oh, too far. I zoomed in too much. All right, so we're, we're gonna adjust this because we're real, we're professionals here. So uh, Williams one, Daniels two, May three, uh, Neighbors Harrison four five, McCarthy, and then uh, Alt. Ooh, all right. So two defensive players go uh, with Quinn Mitchell and Dallas Turner, and then Fawaga went to the uh, the Jets at ten. I don't know how the Jets passed on Odunze. Same thing with the Bears, but. I mean, is this a spot where we just stick and pick and take BPA? Because I know Jefferson. I know Addison. I know Adunze. Now, the Vikings will run into a problem here in a couple of years when it's time to pay Addison and Adunze and you still have Jefferson. But we could cross that bridge when we get there because th this is just like the diet version of Randy Moss when you already had Chris Carter and Jake Reed. F it. F your mom. F your face. We, we, we're doing it, and we're doing it, we're doing it well. So now we're hoping that Penix made it. Uh, looks like he did. So Fashanu, Bowers, uh, Fatanu, Tarion, Byron, Verse, Latham, uh, Cooper de Jean. Uh, so no quarterbacks went. So now we, we just reunited, and it feels so good. So Penix and Adunze together. Oh, baby, my darling, I can't get enough of your love, babe. So... That's exactly what you need to do. And I understand that the Vikings had other needs, interior offensive line, interior de defensive line, cornerback. But when the draft board gives you a gift, do not do not look it in the in the in the face. No, what's the saying? Oh, if you get a gift horse, don't look it in the mouth. So because is that a thing like, like when you're buying a horse, you want to check the teeth to see if it's like healthy and taken care of. I don't know. But uh, now the Vikings in the fourth round at 108. So Mason McCormick. Just there chilling. I absolutely love him coming out of the South Dakota State University. Uh, Sinnott is there. Uh, News Rab. Blake Watson. Brent Jackson, who, who I love. Isaiah Davis getting some love, too. All right, so Braylon Allen, Tavondre. I, I actually feel like Tavondre could take a bit of a, a tumble. Hmm. All right, but in, in this spot, so McCormick, small school guy, but uh, it, there's always one. FCS offensive lineman that, that rises up, whether it's Quinn Mayners, well, that was an FCS, uh, or, or like Ellie Marpet from back in the day. There you go. So, Mason McCormick, you are a Minnesota Viking. That's right, baby. That's right. All right. So, now, uh, still in the fourth round. Uh, oh, I, I love that Jordan McGee is finally getting some love from the PFF mocks because I, I was felt bad taking him in the seventh round because it's like, hey, he's not a seventh round guy. D. Wayne Carter is there. I love me some Dwayne Carter. Mason Smith, I feel like, is super underrated. Uh, I I think that he could find his way into day two. LT3 is there as well. Uh, but also, I mean, Estime is just there. I, I really love Estime. But, all right, so in the spot, it's you know, it's a pick that we make a lot. But, I mean, Dwayne Carter is all heart, all hustle. I absolutely love, love and adore him. Uh, so, because uh, even though the Vikings, I mean, we, we are going BPA. I mean, we've already checked the boxes on a number of uh, needs uh, for the Vikings. Uh, fifth round, two fifth round picks because we're not trading for for win trading. No. 
All right, so DJ James from Auburn. Uh, they have done a lot of work on the Auburn uh, cornerback. Cedric Gray uh, is super interesting as well. Uh, I believe Zach Zinter. But do we just double down offensive line? Zinter probably wouldn't have been a day two pick if he didn't get hurt. So I think that this is huge value. Quasey loves him, the medical guys. O-line, 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 O-line. Uh, Jaheim Bell is there. Uh, Javante Jean-Baptiste uh, from uh, Notre Dame. Highly productive. Also betting on traits. Braden McGregor. I feel like, you know, so McGregor has the traits. He just hasn't had the massive production that, that you would want. But he's super interesting in this spot. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of tossing the coin. JJB uh, or McGregor in this spot. Mm. All, right, all right, all right, all right. I'm going to go Jean-Baptiste on the edge. All right, so rest of the way. See, so we got three picks left. Yeah, uh, a six and two seven. So now, I mean... We're golden. We're, we're good to go. Oh, Corey Taylor, or uh, Tory Taylor, all up in there. Kamani Vidal, uh, I, I love a lot. Namaya Pritchett, uh, I think could be in the mix as well. All right, let, let's take let's take Pritchett. There we go. All right, so Flores gets him a, a solid corner uh, to add to that room. Overall, I'm I'm, I'm kind of liking how this is working out. Not gonna lie. All right, so last, ooh, Elijah, Elijah Jones in the seventh round the hell is happening yoink taking him uh elijah jones super feisty super getting after it i really love it man uh then lastly i mean, do take a receiver here oh, ryan watts is there too damn damn gina devo dylan mcmahon leary nah 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 all right so we're gonna take a receiver uh bub means has been mocked to the vikings uh quite a bit uh cephas i mean i i can't get past Cephas. yeah we're absolutely taking him there you go so again, th this is the draft that you know we definitely definitely shook things up at the top. Now I, I think that it, it would be a huge ass gamble uh, if uh, uh, for Penix to be there at twenty three. So it, it could be a spot too where the Vikings just take Penix at eleven. And like I said, if medicals check out, he has that dog in him. And I I, I love I, I think. Penix's ceiling is as high as any quarterback in this draft. Uh, the knocks against him are the injuries, which he's proven that he can stay healthy the last two years and they don't play two-hand touch in the Pac-12, rest and power, uh, as well as uh, the the age factor. Uh, but Penix just drops piss missiles, man. I, I love it. So the Vikings, uh, so they basically doubled down on uh, lots of positions of need. So you got Roma Dunze up there at one too much to pass up is he a larger version of Devonte adams is he a lighter version of new copkins you can make that case but jefferson addison and adunze will feed families uh, i i understand that you'll probably only be able to keep two out of three in a couple of years when it's time to pay everyone but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there Penix dropping uh bombs uh to all these guys is fantastic you got mccormick and zinter uh going to compete for the interior offensive line spots uh, Dwayne Carter, as well as Javante Jean-Baptiste, uh, shoring up that front seven. Carter, versatility, heart and hustle all over the place. Uh, Jean-Baptiste, long lengthy on the outside. Uh, I think that he would be a very, uh, very solid uh, edge rushing presence uh, and project. Namaya Pritchard, Elijah Jones. Elijah Jones in the seventh freaking round, man. Are you kidding me? Let's go. Let's go. Uh, as well as uh, Joshua Cephas, highly productive at UTSA. So the Vikings definitely hammer uh, that cornerback room uh, as well as receivers, offensive line, as well as uh, get some pieces for the front seven. And also you get your quarterback in the future, all while sticking and picking and not mortgaging the future, quote unquote, you know, not giving up that 2025 first. I think that this is sexy as hell. Not going to lie, man. A and it all started by a surprising player being available at 11 sticking and picking trusting your board and going from there but uh that's it that's at your thoughts are thoughts let us know in the comment section below you guys are the best you know what to do skull production value Ooh, live stream tomorrow